So welcome uh, both to those of you in our press room and to our online audience to this uh, press conference uh, following Parliament's vote on the negotiation mandate on the midterm uh, revision uh, of the EU's long-term budget. I'm especially pleased to introduce the President of the European Parliament, Roberta Metzola, as well as the co-rapporteurs for the uh, multi-annual financial framework, Jan Olbricht and uh, Margarita Marques. Uh, President, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, Jaume, good afternoon to you all. The European Parliament has just adopted its interim report on the EU's long-term budget, the MFF, with a large majority. I would like to start by thanking the co-rapporteurs, Jan Olbricht and Margarita Marques, for their excellent work on this. I want to be clear and unambiguous. There is an urgent need to revise our long Term budget, and there are two main reasons for this, which I will outline in accordance with my institutional role um, as laid down in Article 324 of the TFEU. First of all, because funds are finite. The pandemic, Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine, natural disasters, rising inflation, and a cost of living crisis has taken its very concrete toll on our budget. Rising interest rates have pushed up our next generation EU borrowing costs. The combined effect of all of this is that the EU's budget is stretched to its limit. We must acknowledge this and we have a duty to react. Secondly, because the world has changed beyond recognition in the last years. And therefore, so have our priorities. All member states agree on this. First of all, we need to repay our debts. The Union's financial credibility is on the line. Secondly, we must continue and put our support to Ukraine on a long-term and sustainable path. This is as much about Ukraine's security as it is about Europe's security and our future. We all agree on more resources to address migration we should be able to support member states struck by natural disasters quickly and effectively when they need Europe the most. And finally, we need to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to our competitiveness. This is how we generate real sustainable economic growth in order to afford all of the above. And this is the message I will be taking uh, with me to the Granada summit later on this week where I will ask for the process to be jump-started. We need this to be a full discussion in the October European Council and the revised framework to be in place by the 1st of January 2024 so that we are able to adopt the 24 budget on this basis. And I also want to address very quickly the issue of redeploying already existing funds. We need to be straightforward about what this means for the Parliament allowing our borrowing costs to eat into EU programmes such as Erasmus and uh, Horizon is not something we would easily accept. Uh, we stand ready to engage, we are prepared, and we are conscious of our responsibility to our citizens because ultimately this is about us taking responsibility, fulfilling promises and delivering for the people that we represent. And these people have asked us to deliver on these policies, it is about our credibility. So I will stop here and let the rapporteurs um, uh, go a bit more into the details of our position and then happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Mr. Olbrich, please. Yes. Uh, <coughs> the letter of Mr. Charles Michel to the participants of the uh, Granada meeting. It was very interesting that uh, there will be a very serious debate about our president. But the last sentence says, after exchange of views with the president, we will follow with our strategic issues. So I think that if MFF is not strategic issues, the question is, well, what is? But I think that uh, it's very good that this kind of debate will be in October, even if there is no decision planned. But I think what is important is that the position of the parliament will be presented by our, our president. To be, um, to be very clear, what we made today is to present the political position of the parliament. It means that uh, 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 formally, uh, we have only the constant procedure. So we can say only yes or no after the unanimous decision of the council. So this is the formal situation. The 
The political situation is that we are not waiting. We, we presented our view in, in 22 when we said that what we think should be in your future position and the revision will be absolutely necessary. And the response at that time uh, was no way. So the, after some months, the commission came with the real proposal of revision. If they, if they call it review, this is a revision. And they, they came with five priorities. And of course, uh, they came with the priorities not by chance. Why? Because the macrofinancial assistance for Ukraine finishes at the end of December, full stop. There is no money. From 1st of January, there is no money in MFA. The question is what we will do to, to help Ukraine from the 1st of January. So the Commission came with a very clear uh, position that we need money for Ukrainian facility. We need money for, for the innovation, competitiveness, I mean, so-called step. And of course, the migration, but also the, uh, the, the question of flexibility and the money for the Solidarity Fund. We as Parliament, formally, we should wait. We should wait for the position of the Council, unanimous decision. We don't wait. We don't wait. We, uh, we are preparing our position today. Someone can say, OK, but the Commission proposes 65, 66 fresh money, 66 billion. And we add to this 10. It means, it means 76 or 77 billion euro. How is it realistic? I, of course, the, qu the question is, we know what's going on. We know what is the opposition. But we would like to say in the parliament, to give the money to our president, to say that what are the priorities of you? What is absolutely urgent and necessary? And the numbers what we presented are quite modest comparing to the needs. And of course, the, we would like to, to show that we, are, we take care about the priorities presented by the commission. We would like to reinforce them and we say very clearly, if we don't do it, then we will have problems in 24 with the budget. There will be no money to, for some of the elements. So this is very, very realistic. So we are waiting now for the position of the Council. Unfortunately, the Council doesn't have the plan to make the decision in October, but we need the budget for 24, and the deadline for budget 24 is half of November. So that's why the question is how we will work next year. And this is the election year. The, the election year for everybody, not only for the parliament, but the consequences is for everybody. So that's why our interim report, we voted today with the big majority. We voted today to say very open, very politically, very clearly, we need this kind of revision. We don't make, we cannot make any simple redeployment. No, no, we need a revision. And I think it should be very clear for the governments that if we don't do it, we will have problems. And we as parliament, we are responsible. We are responsible. So we behave in a responsible way, saying that we have the arguments, we have the numbers, we even reduced our ambitions, you can imagine in different committees, but of course to be treated very seriously. So we now expect from the council to make the, the decision as soon as possible so we can say yes or no at the end. Thank you, Madam Marques. E começo por dizer quando há vontade política a União Europeia decide. Feu com a criação do SUR, feu com a criação do Next Generation EU. E o SUR e o Next Generation EU salvaram a vida a milhões de famílias na União Europeia. O nosso relatório, na sequência do que foi dito já pela Presidente e pelo meu colega Correlator, aponta prioridades importantes para o futuro da União Europeia. E, sobretudo, pede coerência entre a ambição política e os recursos financeiros. Não faz sentido ter ambição política se não, há, não existem os recursos financeiros uh, equivalentes. Eu gostaria de destacar alguns pontos. O primeiro é a necessidade de continuar a apoiar a Ucrânia, 
tal como temos apoiado até agora, apoiar a Ucrânia, os ucranianos, as ucranianas, na Ucrânia ou fora da Ucrânia, mas também criar os mecanismos para a liderança e para a participação da União Europeia em fóruns internacionais e na ajuda internacional à Ucrânia. Mas nós, ao mesmo tempo, temos que apoiar os europeus, ou seja, apoiar os europeus no sentido de mitigar, de reduzir o impacto económico e social da guerra e das sanções à Rússia junto dos europeus. E os europeus não podem ver todos os dias os juros aumentarem, a crescerem os encargos com a habitação, os encargos dos jovens, das famílias, na habitação, na energia. Um segundo ponto que eu gostaria de destacar tem a ver com assegurar que o Next Generation EU, ou seja, os encargos com a dívida do Next Generation EU, não vão sair de políticas ou de programas europeus. É claro, quando, quando o quadro financeiro plurianual foi aprovado em dezembro de 2020, as taxas de juros rondavam os 0%. Hoje rondam os 4%. Portanto, os encargos com a dívida, os encargos com o Next Generation EU aumentaram substancialmente. E, portanto, precisamos de ter a certeza que esse suporte para o pagamento dos encargos da dívida estão dentro do orçamento da União Europeia, no sentido de assegurar o controle democrático por parte do orçamento, como, por parte do Parlamento, como autoridade orçamental, mas estão acima das diferentes linhas orçamentais, no sentido de assegurar, dar garantias de que não há cortes nas políticas europeias. Um terceiro ponto que gostaria de destacar é a necessidade de criar um instrumento permanente para responder às crises. Nós até agora fomos sempre adotando soluções pontuais. Em alguns casos, pondo em risco algumas políticas. Mas nós sabemos que precisamos de soluções permanentes e, sobretudo, precisamos de aprender com as decisões recentes da União Europeia. Precisamos de aprender com o Next Generation EU, com o SUR, no sentido de pensarmos o futuro da União Europeia. Mas precisamos também de proteger a identidade e a dimensão política da política de coesão, agora e no futuro. Fixámos prioridades para podermos assumir uma posição realista. O meu colega já o disse. Evidentemente, como devem imaginar, falando com os nossos colegas no Parlamento, a imaginação é imensa e a procura de ter um acréscimo dos envelopes financeiros para todas as políticas também é grande. Nós conseguimos moderar essa ambição no sentido de termos uma proposta que é simultaneamente ambiciosa, mas realista para estarmos em condições de negociar com o Conselho. Também sabemos, e isso é um debate que temos que fazer rapidamente, todos nós defendemos novos alargamentos. Novos alargamentos exigem reformas institucionais, mas exigem também reforma e uma nova arquitetura para o orçamento da União Europeia. É diferente termos uma União Europeia a 27 ou termos uma União Europeia a 30 ou a 35. E temos que pensar nesta nova arquitetura do orçamento da União Europeia. Finalmente, gostei de ouvir o Ministro, a Presidência Espanhola, hoje no debate, dizer que o Conselho está comprometido. Mas palavras não são suficientes. E por isso tudo faremos, e agradeço o papel da Presidente do Parlamento, tudo faremos para que o Orçamento da União Europeia, a revisão do Orçamento da União Europeia, seja um ponto importante no Conselho Europeu no final de outubro. E não apenas para fazer uma discussão inicial de orientação. Precisamos de ir mais rápido, mais profundo, para que possamos ter, de facto, um novo orçamento em vigor em 1 de janeiro de 2024. Obrigado. Merci beaucoup. Questions now from uh, journalists. Yes, please. Floor is yours. Łukasz Osiński from Polish Press Agency. Uh, I have a question to the, the President. And uh, do you believe that the European Union 
uh, should find some additional funds, European funds, for those member states which accepted the, the highest number of refugees. We all know that this is a big burden for those member states. Um, uh, I mean, in the in the uh, in the process of revision of the MF. And the second question is: ju Just before holiday, President von der Leyen announced a big package for. Uh, for Ukraine, macrofinancial assistance, 50 billion euros, um, taking into account the, the level of the interest rates and uh, uh, the current economic situation of the European Union. Uh, do, you, do you believe that this is feasible? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, on when we look at why there needs to be a, a revision, uh, and that is precisely because of the, what I outlined at the beginning, uh, that we are realistically looking at the fact that there's no money. Uh, and governments come and say, look, uh, we need help. Whether that is uh, on an unprecedented influx of migrants uh, and the responsibility that needs to be taken at member state level for the management of that influx, and two, uh, and of course the funding pillar of migration, the AMF, is always a, a very, um, let's say, negotiated sum, but also needs to be flexible enough in order to meet uh, with what is unprecedented, just like the pandemic was, the next generation EU was, was, was uh, uh, unprecedented uh, and not predicted, and also Ukraine. Uh, we will vote on the Ukraine facility in October too, in two weeks from now, uh, and we do that um, because, uh, as Jan said, uh, the MFA will end by the end of the, of the year. And I don't think that there is any member state, and you will find a huge majority in this house, as we say, we need to continue to support Ukraine. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens in two weeks. Um, but uh, the question will be then is after we vote, uh, and this is where the European Parliament is co-legislator, uh, and that's for the European Parliament as a co-legislator, not only on the Ukraine facility, but also on STEP. And also, um, we would see the MFF revision as part of the global package. Uh, and that will be where we go with negotiating with the Council, because uh, one should not exclude the other. And as has been said, we need to also realistically see, for example, also on uh, natural disasters, that a country that faces a natural disaster towards the end of the year cannot be told there is no money left. Uh, and that is not something that I think uh, would have a sound uh, financial management or also meets the legitimate expectations of our citizens. Please, Mr. Can, can I just add something? Uh, you, you, you allow me, I would speak English, even if they're the same country. <clears throat> uh, first, the, uh, we have to be very clear and transparent. Some of the member states, including ours, has got money especially from the former period, for the refugees from Ukraine. We should be very clear. That that's why the budget has been changed, to use the money for refugees. So to say that it's true that in the budget there is no title refugees, and probably we need it. That's why we are fighting for the migration in the revision. In the former times, we have the, all this care and care plus, et cetera, which was for the refugees, and REACT EU is also for the refugees. So it's including our country, we should be very clear how much money we use for the refugees. Secondly, uh, what you're, secondly, it will not be MFA. The MFA is finished. From the 1st of January, the question is open. Either we will have the facility, which we will vote, or there is no facility, and we will continue another MFA. Another MFA plus plus. The answer is not very clear. We are now asking the member states, what are you, what are you going to do? Do you want to go to, to borrow money from the market, or do you want to make, give the, the, the fresh money? It's the Commission says 50 billion grants and loans, but the Commission says no MFA, but probably we will finish with MFA++. So just to clarify the whole situation. Thank you. Next question. Yes, please. Thank you. Barzan San reporter from Kurusan24. Uh, you have uh, some uh, deal with some country like Turkey, Tunisia. Do you think you need to more money, extra money to uh, should go to the EU deals with the, that countries? And uh, also, do you think uh, European 
parliament should make it some other deals with the other country like uh, Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan? Thank you. Who would like to take the question, President? So I can give a global answer because, of course, these are um, uh, deals that take place between um, international financial institutions uh, and supported by uh, the EU institutions. Why do I say this? Because the position of this parliament is we have to make sure that every sum committed to uh, is looked into. Uh, what is the money being uh, um, given for? How is it spent? Uh, that is a question we ask for any uh, discussions that we have uh, with the third countries, uh, whether the ones that you mention or others. In the migration context, perhaps I, I, I could expand on the fact that we are asked as to what our neighborhood policy is about. Uh, and for the parliament, it has not only be, never been only about migration. It's about investment, it's about talking to our partners, about being able uh, to have a conversation with those countries that are facing very heavy challenges. Uh, and this parliament has asked these questions, will continue to ask, and will continue to hope that when we resolve, if I can use that word, which is a tall order, um, the current um, unworkable migration uh, situation that we have, it would also include the possibility to have a working relationship with third countries, because we need them as our partners on this. Madam Marques. Our position is clear on uh, that point. It means we are proposing, uh, as the European Parliament, we are proposing a top-up on the Commission proposal on migration in the different dimensions, including neighborhood uh, policy. But uh, we need uh, to develop some agreements with other member states, uh, sorry, with third countries uh, as uh, countries for destination or uh, transit. But uh, we need to do these agreements respecting the rule of law and uh, human rights. This is our proposal. It means we can use the EU money on the development of the EU values and the citizens' rights. So this is our position. It's very important, this type of agreements, not only on migration, but also on economic development, on economic growth, or creation of jobs, because we know that one important part of the people trying to enter in Europe, they do it because they don't have conditions to live in their countries. Of course, there are other reasons, but this is one of them. So we need to support countries to uh, create jobs, and, but there are a key point, is the respect of the European values. The last two questions, uh, Annie first, and then uh, you. Merci. J'ai la question parce que dans la I have to speak English speakers here, English speakers. No, no, no. Uh, uh, my question is: uh, in the similar situation, uh, the U.S. Senate has been criticizing Biden's administration heavily for borrowing from China. So my question to you is: uh, Do you have a frame? Do you have any caveats from whom to borrow this money to fund these very important dossiers? No, you take the, question, the, the, the answer now, yes. I'm aware of the, of the um, U.S. situation and also that this is a potential, let's say, a movement that we could see from the Council uh, in terms of uh, taking out that fund for Ukraine and making it as a separate process, which we would disagree with. Uh, we also... This is the reason why we have pushed for a long time for the increase of own resources and the use of them. Um, because let's not forget that from the own resources, uh, member states are able to take back what they would have given in. Uh, and this is something that should be contributing to the new funds that are available. For, if I can continue on what Jan said, the non-fragmentation of our financial policy. Uh, I think it is in our interest to keep our priorities on board, and especially with regards to the help for Ukraine, is that we do not see that this will not be uh, a majority view of council. Uh, and they will find the parliament as um, uh, their strong ally for this, and the Ukrainians actually need this. Uh, and, and this is something that I have just spoken with the Ukrainian prime minister about, and I gave a commitment that the parliament will continue to stand by their side. Yes, <coughs> sir. 
the whole situation, you know, where is the money from? Because this is your question. And we, we, now we have a, a completely new situation in EU. Why? Because when the member states, especially the, the big member states and the rich ones, they decided to go to the financial market and to borrow money, the whole situation changed. EU began to be a big player on financial market. So this is completely, that's why the anti-Europeans are not satisfied because going to the financial market makes the EU stronger. I mean, uh, but we have now the experience and the information coming from the Commission uh, saying that the banks are really interested in borrowing money from them. It means that there is a whole set of banks which create the group of banks which goes to the financial markets. We have the bonds issued, we have the especially green bonds, and the Commission says that up to now this is a big success. I mean, borrowing money on the financial market is very interesting for the market uh, because we are a real a big player on the, on the market. So that's why uh, it's not that we, we borrow money from China and someone. No, we go to the market, we issue the, the bonds, and the, but completely new situation for you. I mean, the EU, which is uh, uh, entering on, on this kind of financial uh, context, is, is new. But uh, so we are not especially afraid. Commission says it's a big success. The question is that we will have to pay it back. But this is another issue. The question how we'll pay it back, and this is what the President said, we need own resources. Because if we don't have own resources, we will have to pay back the credit, uh, or next credits, and, uh, and next it means that we will have to pay it from the budget. And we, if we don't have the bigger national contribution, if we don't have the own resources, it means that the budget will be smaller because we will have to pay it back. That's why we are fighting for resources, because the, the situation is completely different than two or three years ago. Thank you. And the last, ah, sorry. Yes, please. Deux points à votre question. D'abord, uh, parce que l'utilisation uh, du mécanisme du Next Generation EU, c'est ce qu'on fait pour mobiliser l'argent pour l'Ukraine. C'est-à-dire, on, on ne va pas dévier l'argent du Next Generation EU pour l'Ukraine. Ce n'est pas ça. C'est utiliser exactement le même euh, mécanisme. Une autre question, c'est que, bien évidemment, les questions que vous avez soulevées, c'est les questions que nous aussi, on demande à la Commission. Nous avons un groupe de travail permanent, le RRF Working Group, et dans ce groupe de travail, nous avons des réunions régulières avec le, la, la Commission, des auditions régulières avec la Commission, où la Commission nous fait toujours l'état de l'art sur les différents moments où la Commission va au marché pour mobiliser l'argent pour le Next Generation EU. Ça, bien évidemment, c'est très important. Merci. Voilà. Et donc, la dernière question, là-bas. Merci. Oui, bonjour. Une question en, en français, s'il vous plaît. Euh, C'est bon Je suis là. <rire> euh, Est-ce que la négociation du budget 2024 peut être un, un moyen de pression pour forcer le, le Conseil, justement, à prendre position sur la révision du MFF Et une deuxième toute petite question. Est-ce que vous êtes déçu euh, du nombre de voix qui se, sont, qui, qui se sont portées sur le vote de la résolution 393 voix, est-ce que c'est décevant ou est-ce que c'est une majorité euh, qui vous va about majorities I mean it's uh, it's it's large by this this parliament standards if I can say if I can say it very uh, clear we also had a significant number of abstentions um, and only 136 votes against so 92 abstentions 393 plus uh, and I would of course uh, and this is why I mentioned uh, article 324 before uh, is because there is an institutional process that we are responsible enough to be in time to engage in. Uh, and this is where the Parliament, uh, as the one not only going into uh, elections, has to show the citizens that their concerns are being met. Uh, and what we cannot afford, uh, if you ask me what would be the least ideal situation, is that we go into the new year with no budget and we will have to work on a much smaller uh, budget of the current year, so one twelfth month after month of what would have been spent. Uh, last year, and that is not a feasible situation, especially in a year when the challenges are not going to decrease, and also uh, when we are um, uh, telling, Euro telling our citizens that Europe matters, 
Europe listens to them uh, and Europe delivers. Uh, this is where the Parliament, if you will, wants to be the responsible partner in order to do precisely that. Si vous permettez, seulement pour ajouter, les membres du Parlement ne sont pas de, comment dire, nowhere. Ils sont de, de concrets, de pays concrets. Il y a, il a maintenant le débat dans chaque pays. Ce sont les, les élections qui viennent. Alors c'est très clair hein, que, bien sûr, euh, que, que, quand vous regardez les listes des, des gens qui, comment ils ont voté, souvent c'est la question des intérêts nationaux et bien sûr les, les situations difficiles. Ça c'est le moment. Hein. Le, le même vote, il y a deux, deux ans, ce sera complètement différent. Mais il faut être réaliste. On, on, a, on a quand même à avoir la majorité qui est, qui est importante. Ce n'est pas, pas deux trois votes, c'est quand même, quand même la, la majorité. Deux, euh, la deuxième chose qui était déjà expliquée par la présidente, c'est qu'on euh, peut imaginer qu'on va jouer avec le budget 24 et, 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 le, et le budget multiannuel. La question, c'est que les négociateurs du budget 24, ils se préparent avec les données que nous avons dans notre MFE révision. Ils commencent avec ça. Bien sûr, on, on attend maintenant la position du Conseil. Si le Conseil vient pour les négociations du budget 24 avec les changements ou sans les changements, bien sûr, il vient sans les changements. Mais, mais nous, on vient avec les changements. Alors ça, c'est la position des négociations. Et après, on attend. Si, euh, Peut-être le 24, ça, ça sera sans les révisions. Mais ça, 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 la révision est quand même nécessaire. Alors on, a, on peut probablement, comme le président a dit, on va prendre le risque d'avoir le 1, 1, 12, 12e de, de, de budget, mais on se prépare pour la révision tout de suite, tout de suite après la décision qui est prise par, la, par le Conseil. Alors c'est une sorte de flexibilité réaliste, et, et, mais quand même, on, nous, on présente la position de notre, de l'intérim. C'est-à-dire que le Parlement va pour les négociations avec l'intérim. Après, on verra, mais on est sûr... Que ça, ça arrive, hein. ça, 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 doit, ça doit être décidé parce que sinon, sinon surtout Ukraine, surtout Ukraine qui doit être décidée. Pour nous, ce qui est clair, c'est que euh, le budget 2024, sans cette révision du cadre financier pluriannuel, n'est pas acceptable, même du côté des États membres. C'est-à-dire que les États membres vont se rendre compte que le budget 2024, ce qui peut être affecté au budget 2024 tenant compte de l'MFF actuel, ce n'est pas suffisant pour les défis politiques, pour ce que les États membres demandent, comme la présidente a dit au début, les États membres demandent pour soutenir des situations d'exception euh, qui existent tout le temps et que les États membres vont demander plus d'argent. Donc c'est ça aussi pour nous, c'est un élément aussi de euh, négociation. Mais bien évidemment, il y a cette comparaison entre la proposition qui va arriver du côté du Conseil et notre proposition du Parlement, c'est déjà mise à jour avec euh, la proposition euh, MFF. Finalement, pour nous, c'est très important, comme mon collègue a dit au début, d'avoir un accord mi-novembre pour que ça puisse entrer immédiatement dans la proposition de budget 2024. Mais si par hasard on n'arrive pas à le faire, on le fera au moment où on arrive à un accord. Merci beaucoup et bon après-midi.